All right, we got a couple of uh, NFL games for the weekend. Let's go to the Saturday night game in Cincinnati. I'll have to start with the weather. 40 degrees, not that bad this time of year. However, 70% chance of rain, quarter of an inch of rain expected in Cincinnati, the Ohio area on Saturday. That's the first thing to look at. Steelers open three-point road favorite here. They've been getting 74% of the early action here in Vegas, and yet the line has come down to two and a half, suggesting that the sharp guys are on the home dog here, which we're seeing a lot of in these early NFL playoff games. The total is sitting at 46. Two games they've already played this season. Bengals won at Pittsburgh in a defensive battle 16-10. to Ben Roethlisberger was terrible with three interceptions. That was his first game back after the uh, long layoff he had. And then week 12, it was the Bengals who had the quarterback injury as Andy Dalton got hurt, and Pittsburgh blew him out 33-20. to Roethlisberger in that game was sensational, 30 of 39 passing, and yet despite all the points, he did not throw a, a touchdown pass in the game. So you got the Steelers team coming in, kind of the team that uh, no one wants to play. Antonio Brown, Heath Miller, Martavius Bryant, the offense, very potent, one of the few teams that has a capable quarterback here in this postseason. So Harvard, really, is this the team nobody wants to play right now? Well, I would think so. Uh, and, you know, as far as uh, a lot of people getting on the Pittsburgh uh, I mean, Cincinnati, uh, right from the start, I think that uh, they're protecting themselves in case D'Angelo Williams with that high ankle sprain doesn't get a chance to play. Because you can always readjust your bet, bet more money on the other side, lay things off and things like that. But they got to protect themselves there. I think he's going to play. Uh, ben, I mean, what can you say about him? This guy, to me, it seems like on every occasion he knows how to step it up. He almost can will it in. He's going to get it in somehow, some way. He's going to find a way to win. Uh, the Steelers' weakness is against the pass, but I don't think A.J. McCarron uh, is really that big of a threat. He's a good, good quarterback. Uh, I don't want to say, hey, just because he's playing, it's an automatic loss for Cincinnati. He's a very quality backup. But I think what they'll do is have a conservative game plan that would mirror and image uh, their coach. Uh, and that's probably why they've done so poorly in the uh, wild card games. 0-6 uh, in the wild cards. They, you know, they haven't won a playoff game since 1990. Now, I'm not one to go back into history and back into trends because this is a different team than last year, and last year was different than all those others. But what happens is when you start piling up those stats, the media and everybody else, they start reminding you, 0-6, 0-6, 0-6. Uh, I also think that picture yourself in the locker room. Picture yourself this week practicing like the Steelers had to do. They have to be sky high with the Jets losing and them getting in. What a gift horse the Jets gave them. And I don't think that this team is going to blow that opportunity. On the other hand, look at the Cincinnati uh, locker room. I think it's a huge distraction not knowing if Dalton could come out and play or is it going to be A.J.? They know what Dalton brought, which was mostly playoff losses, but on the other hand, he has been the, uh, the face of their franchise. To me, that's kind of a distraction. Ben, he averages 42 pass attempts, 345 yards. Nobody has a better combination than Ben to Antonio Brown. And if Cincinnati has a weakness, it's not against the run. They only average about 90 yards per uh, game against the run. Their only weakness on defense, and it's not glaring or anything like that, but their biggest weakness is against the pass. And I think for this game, there will be just enough passes, just enough schemes and coverages that are blown that Antonio Brown will find a way with Ben to get it in and cover just a small two-and-a-half or three points game. Yeah, very small number here. The Bengals have been covering numbers all year, 12-3-1 against the spread at home. They're 6-2 and two straight up. 4-3-1 and one ATS. One of those home losses was against this Pittsburgh team. Also on an 8-2 run under the total. You know, I've talked to people all over Vegas what their impersonations of, uh, or their impressions of A.J. McCarron have been, and it's been all over the map. Some people say, well, he's a kid, he's untested, you can't trust him in a playoff game. Others say they like what they see. They've seen of him in preseason as well as some of these regular season games. Somebody said that, you know, he came from Alabama, a top-notch program, so he knows about the spotlight. I still have a big question mark about him. I don't know what to expect if he has to come out here and play against a high-profile game against a division rival like this with so much 
at stake and everybody watching him. With that said, I have no qualms at all about the Cincinnati defense, number two in the NFL in points allowed. You got Dunlap and Atkins with double digits in the sacks. So, Zach, we have here the, the hard luck Bengals team down to their backup quarterback. And I'll ask you, is that the kiss of death for this unit? Yeah, this was going to be a premium play for me. So for the 500 to 1,000 people that watch this video, you're about to get it here. I agree with Hollis uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but I won't, this will be an opportunity where I don't take the spread. I think it's going to be a close game. And when you have special teams being a factor and Mike Tomlin's decisions to go for two points versus kicking a field goal <laughs> or going for an extra point, I think you take money line with Pittsburgh and take away the risk of them winning by a point or two points or whatever it may be. Um, in Cincinnati, they can move the ball, as John just mentioned. Even with A.J. McCarron, they should. They scored two quick touchdowns against Denver Broncos before they went con too conservative and got uh, him out of his uh, rhythm. But uh, their offense is capable, Jeremy Hill and Giovanni Bernard. They still have A.J. Green up on the uh, post there, and they have the talent. I think Marvin Lewis and this team is prepared to get over that hump, but some way or another, Big Ben is going to deliver. That first game you mentioned, um, I just remember Big Ben wasn't ready to come back in that game. That's why they lost that. He couldn't deliver passes. His timing was off. Just rushed back too early in that. Second time they bounced back and delivered death blow. Um, and then Cincinnati, their team that's had too many wins this year, uh, just a mirage wins that I would call them, sort of like Kansas City, but they had uh, that comeback win against Seattle, they shouldn't have won that game. Game against Baltimore where they came back in the last minute, won that game. A couple others that were in that same realm, and they can't, I think they've lost that magic. They don't have that capability anymore. And like Hollis said, Steelers got in. They're that one team that would, if they would have been pushed out, you would have looked at it and said, oh, that's a team if they could have got in, they could have done some damage while they're in. you got the Patriots in trouble. You've got the Broncos, who knows what they're going to do with Peyton Manning. And Pittsburgh is that type of team. Great coach, team that has the track record, and they're playing a division opponent where they have, they've had more wins over the last 10 years than probably any other team in their division. So they've got the confidence, and I think they get the win, money line. Oh, so you're saying that Marvin Lewis may be 0-7 now in the postseason? It's just a bad matchup for them. I think yeah. they, they wanted that bye. If they could have had that rest, they, their plan was to have the rest and get Dalton back healthy or at least 80% to play in that game. And when you have home field advantage, that's just a, that's a big strength to have. They probably would have been facing, um, who knows, maybe they would have been facing, uh, who's the other, what's the other matchup? Texans and Chiefs. They probably, that's who they probably yeah, wanted. They have a week exactly. off and yeah, uh, they face probably, the winner of that. They probably wanted that matchup, they didn't get it, and now I think they're going to pay the price for it. Yeah, that's certainly a fascinating part of these early rounds is this playoff seating and who's going to go where. Uh, I like both offenses on these teams, particularly Pittsburgh, number three in the NFL in yards, number four in points. Tremendous passing attack that is healthy and clicking right now. One weak spot for Pittsburgh is this young secondary. They finished up 30th in the NFL in, against the pass. And the Bengals, even with their young quarterback, it's a balanced offense. They got a lot of talent, weapons, including a guy like A.J. Green. They finished up number seventh in the NFL in points scored. I can't imagine that they're going to go conservative like they did in the second half, as you mentioned, against uh, the Denver Broncos, but they got plenty of offensive weapons. You got a Pittsburgh team on a four and two run over the total. Even though Pittsburgh plays a lot of these playoff games outdoors in January, you know they're 17 four and one over the total in playoff games. And finally, when these teams meet here in Cincinnati, it's six and two over the total. So I'm going to hope that there's not a monsoon of rain on Saturday. It's just a, a light drizzle, and I'm going to look at the Steelers-Bengals Saturday night going over the total.